TGR. It all began a few years ago when my younger brother showed me the first CG trailer for Overwatch, the newest Blizzard IP at the time. The quality of the animation was spectacular per usual for Blizzard, but something about the character design and the world aesthetic immediately grabbed my attention. It was very reminiscent of Pixar, but with a hint of anime. I really liked it. So I put the title in the back of my head until we know a release date. It wasn't for a few years that I would be reminded of the game when Blizzard announced a public beta. Of course, I downloaded the thing onto my PS4, and as soon as I started playing, I could tell that it was something special. The obvious aesthetics grabbed my attention, and once I opened up that hero selection screen for the first time, I began to think, how exactly does this game work? After putting in a few hours, the closest title I could think of in terms of direct comparisons would be Team Fortress 2. However, this game had something that elevated it past what that affirmation title could do in my eyes. This game had something special, and I really wouldn't understand exactly what it was until a few months later, but we'll get to that in a bit. For now, I was enjoying just playing the game and trying out different heroes, loving the feel of the game. The feedback in particular felt amazing, especially that sound you hear when you successfully hit a target. The callouts of the different characters that make you aware of certain threats. When heroes use their ultimate abilities, and your teammates shout their lines in English or whatever language you natively play in, so you can understand it, but the enemy shouts their ultimate line in that specific character's native tongue, it was this attention to detail that made the game feel so utterly inviting. The music in between rounds and in the main menu was captivating as well, and the tense music when matches are nearing their end worked in really heightening that tension. And this was just the beta. This shows just how much polish Blizzard puts into their titles. What really solidified my purchase, however, was the first time I got play of the game as Pharah. I'm sure many people share this statement, but that little feature showed off your potential skill or importance in the match at that very specific moment. This small but really important feature made me feel like I made a difference in the match, and of course gave me the option to flex in my sick play, bro. <laughs> Once the beta ended, which was only a few weeks before the game officially launched, I was more than sold. I began to look up guides on how to play certain characters and found a few channels on YouTube that I still follow today. I started watching all the cinematics that Blizzard had released up until then and just fell in love with the lore. The idea that this defunct group of heroes and villains now coming back to relevance, gave the world this sense of old and that people lived in for such a long time. It made the world feel very believable. At some point, the developers announced that all future updates would be free, and my purchase was more than solidified. When the full game released on May 24th, 2016, it was bliss. A few friends of mine got it, as well as my brother, and the path to hundreds of hours began. That introduction with Winston restarting Overwatch has become one of my personal favorite cinematics in gaming. The setup was just too damn good. Jean, I made a chronal accelerator. I'm sure I can do this. <clears throat> to all agents of o to all agents of Overwatch. That's not right. To the former agents of Overwatch. This is Winston. <laughs> Obviously. <clears throat> After launch, the game was a critical and sales success. It won the 2016 Game of the Year Awards at the Game Awards. The Game of the Year at the Game Awards 2016 is... Overwatch. Overwatch. 
and the community grew massively, reaching 35 million users after only a year and a half. Blizzard also adding heroes roughly every three months was something really fun that the community would look forward to. The lead up to set releases were treated like events, with the company teasing the characters outside of the game on social media and other ways that were pretty unique. This would be fun for the most part as well, with the exception of the Sombra AR game. That build up lasted way too long for its own good, with too many dead ends before the official reveal at BlizzCon. <laughs> 1,320 Day 23! <laughs> Still, there are some fun memories of the community coming together and speculating, just trying to figure out who this mysterious figure was. Overall, adding new heroes is fun and keeps the community engaged, and they're all free updates, so that sweetens the deal by quite a lot. Roughly a month after release, competitive mode was released. And finally, that something special that I mentioned earlier became evident when the first meta started developing. The ebb and the flow of matches felt totally different than what I was used to. This game always emphasized communication, but in a competitive setting, it was crucial for any victory. This was something that I had not personally experienced much before in games, with the last multiplayer game that I coordinated with partners being Halo 3's 4 vs 4 team deathmatch. I absolutely loved coordinating attacks and using our ultimates to win fight after fight. It was exhilarating and rewarding. With competitive, Blizzard introduced a ranking system. At first, during Season 1, it was level-based, but Season 2 onwards, they changed it to a rank-based uh, bronze to Grandmaster tier that Blizzard has used in other titles like StarCraft. So the competitive mode was what led me to spend almost 500 hours on two accounts, one on PS4 and the other on PC. I began as a DPS support flex with a lot of Soldier and Ana played during the early seasons of the competitive landscape, while currently have had to add a main tank to the list due to how hard and unfun it can be to play that role. Since there is a ton of crowd control in this game, with stuns and movement decrease abilities that are used against such a big target quite consistently. So that leads me to playing a lot of Orisa and Winston these last two seasons. And of course, Moira has been my main support since her release. Yeah, I'm a filthy Moira main. At me, bro. <laughs> I've made friends and I loved interacting with the community, but it was not all fun in games. Like many online titles, toxicity was and still continues to be an issue. Being a team-based game can lead to the putting off of responsibility. For example, it was my team's fault, not mine that I lost. Look at my gold medals, look at how much damage I'm doing, etc. Now, while this can ring true for a lot of scenarios, we as individuals that are part of a team have plenty of fault in the outcome of any game. Couple this with Blizzard introducing heroes with abilities to counter specific metas, as well as buffing and nerfing other heroes in immediate response to other metas, that led to a point of frustration within the player base. Quite a number of players dropped off and went elsewhere, myself included. Remember when Brigida was added to the game? That changed the meta and led to the popular GOATS composition, which even took over the Overwatch League, the professional setting, and was used in almost every match by those pros, all while eliminating the dive meta, which, if you ask me, was way more fun to play and watch. But that's just, like, my opinion, man. I took a break from the game for about two months when Apex Legends dropped, and I felt fine at first, but if I'm brutally honest, there's just no other first-person shooter experience like Overwatch for me. After a bit, I went back, I did some placements, and... Well, here I am. I'm not entirely happy with the game currently, as there is a huge issue in the ladder of competitive, with multiple DPS teams just being there. The seasonal events, which started off amazing and unique, have become still repetitive, with the last PvE event failing to reach the height of the previous one, and summer games being the same damn thing four times in a row. Though, we did finally get Torben in a swimsuit, that's pretty important. Also, screw loot boxes, even if cosmetic, they don't add anything to the game and just represent gambling. At the time of this recording, 222 Hero Lock and Roll Queue have been added to the PTR alongside Sigma Hero 31. 222 Roll Queue are really changing the game. 
every game that I've played has been balanced and has felt like we've just been outplayed instead of just some other bullcrap that came from having 3 DPS or a really uneven team. I honestly believe that the game will be better for this, with Blizzard being able to balance it in ways that were almost impossible before. And that is a huge part of why I have stuck with the game. As I have mentioned ad nauseum, there truly is no other experience like Overwatch. With such a unique set of heroes to choose from, with all having some sort of uniqueness to them, the game hardly ever feels old. Representation in Overwatch has also been something that I'm very, very happy with. When I think about characters in modern video games, it's easy to think of a white male protagonist. And there's nothing wrong with a white male protagonist, but there is something inherently wrong with having so many of that type of character in a lot of our AAA games. And I'm by no means a social justice warrior or whatever these anti-progressive people like to call, but I am very pro having minorities uh, being represented in games. Having your essentially main character Tracer being a lesbian was an amazing step for video game development. Having so many different nationalities in the game is also something that I, I you rarely get to see. You have characters that are Mexican, that are Indian. Symmetra, not only just being an Indian character, but also autistic. It, it, it's amazing. Egyptian, that are black. Moira being Irish and having those other lines spoken in that dialect, it helps with diversity. I love that about the game, and though a lot of the community wants a female black American, which I also would love to see, you still can't look at what Overwatch's development team has done and scoff at it. They've, they've done great. It is a step in the right direction, especially when compared with the rest of the industry. So major, major kudos to Blizzard and the Overwatch team in delivering the most diverse set of characters in probably any game. If you disagree, at me and walk out of here, please. The ideas of being a hero and standing up for what is right in the face of adversity is a subject that will never get old, and that's for a good reason. We're, We're all, all soldiers, soldiers now. now. I've learned to love the ins and outs, the ebbs and flows of the game, and look forward to what Blizzard will bring in the near future. I've cursed the game, I've laughed, I've been super frustrated, and I've threatened to quit more than one time, but I'm still here. And that is the reason why I still play Overwatch. Like what you saw? Check out some of our other videos. Be sure to click the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching.